Good morning, one and all. Good morning, those here present. Good morning to those who have joined us on the World Wide Web. We welcome you this morning. If you have joined us for the first time across the world, we welcome you to the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church located here in Greater Portmore, Jamaica, St. Catherine. It is a brand new day and we give honor and praise to our God, our King, our Father and Friend. This is a wonderful day, wonderful opportunity and we encourage you as you join with us, expect a blessing from the Lord, our God, our Master, Maker, and Friend. Today we celebrate our senior citizens. Well, September is the month for the celebration of senior citizens, and we celebrate them. We thank God for them. We bless the name of the Lord for those who have gone ahead, and we can continue to learn from them. There is a quote that says, if you stand on the shoulders of those who have gone ahead of you, you will see further and better into the future. And so we thank God. Today is also Mission Sunday here. So a part of our celebration today is our senior citizens. And uh, scripture says, Praise ye the Lord, Psalm 148. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. Praise ye him sun and moon. Praise him all the stars of light. Praise him ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he is great. He has he hath also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth. He dragons and all he did. Fire, hail, snow, vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying flow kings of the earth and all the people, princes and all the judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent, his glory is above the earth and the heaven. He also exalt the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even to the children of Israel, the people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Praise Him. 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 Jesus, blessed Savior, You're worthy to be praised. Stand as we sing that song one more time. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, you're worthy to be praised. So let us praise him. Praise Him, praise Him. 
sing that chorus one more time and let's just lift our hands as we sing praise him one final time praise him Could we put our hands together for him at this time? Praise God. You may be seated all across this place. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. We give God thanks for this wonderful day. This morning, our moderators are Brother Merrick Wong and Deaconess Rose Wong. We invite them to come along at this time as they will take us through with the help and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning, brethren. It's a privilege once more to be in the house of the Lord. God is good. And all the time, God is good. We want to thank the Lord for the wonderful showers we had yesterday. Because we were going through such a time of heat but the place is now much cooler we can sleep a little better at night and to god be the glory it has nothing to do with us but it has all to do with god so this morning as we come in his presence let us lift up and magnify his holy name for all that he has done for us good morning my name is Merrick Wong, as Pastor said, and we are tasked with the work this morning to moderate through this morning's service. We should have visitors from one of the Kiwanis Club. Are they here? Is it Kingston and St. Andrew or St. Catherine or Greater Portmore? What is it? South St. Andrew. Andrew, okay. Thank you. And then we are also, it's Mission Sunday, and then we are also celebrating Senior Citizens, as September is Senior Citizens Month, and we are focusing on Senior Citizens this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, both that are online and in-house, in we are here to celebrate Senior Citizens Month. And we, we focus mostly on the senior citizens this morning. A lot of us don't, especially a certain section of our, our, our genuine, our, our females, I'm going to be blunt, they don't like to know, their, you have to know their ages. We respect that. But we must understand that senior citizens in this country when you attain 60, I believe it is 60, you have become a senior citizen. And that is a privilege. You see what's happening now, page 20 and 
in the teens dying. So it's something that we should honor and not be afraid to say, yes, I am. So even when you go into the bank, there's a citizen line. Don't you join it? Are you going to the regular line with a long stretch? And so forth and so on. So don't bother to worry about being a senior citizen. Be proud. In our country, aging in the Bible is said to be a sign of experience. The Lord promises he continued to love and concern his concern for the elderly. That is found in Isaiah 46, verse 3 and 4. So it is not something that we should not be proud of. It's something that we should be proud of because through the years we have garnered a lot of experience and it has helped us to pass on to our children. So this morning, as we continue our morning service, we will ask our praise team to come at this time to lead us in the hymn, He Leadeth Me. Right following, we'll have our intercessor prayer, which will be done by our deaconess, Rose Wong. Praise team. Blessed thought, oh words with heavenly comfort fraught. Shall we stand? He leadeth me, oh blessed thought, oh words with heavenly comfort fraught.
Please remain standing for the intercessor prayer. Are there any spoken requests this morning? Nation, family. The nation, the family, the sick. Are there any unspoken requests? Can you just raise your hand if you have an unspoken request? The Lord understands our hearts. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks this morning for this wonderful day. We thank you, O Lord Jesus, that we could have been given this opportunity. It's a privilege to be awake this morning and to be enjoying another day in your presence. We want to thank you, O God, that our senses are intact. We can see, we can hear, we can taste, we can smell, and we can feel. And it's all because of you. It has nothing to do with us. We want to thank you, O God, that you woke us up this morning. We are closed and we are in our right minds. We can carry on a conversation that somebody can understand. Oh God, we give you glory. Some of these things, oh Father, we take for granted that yes, when we wake up, we'll be able to have all our senses intact. But God, it is only because of your goodness and your grace why it is so. So Lord Jesus, we glorify you this morning and we magnify you. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And to you, all honor and glory is due, O oh God. We just praise you. O oh God, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. Brethren, agree with me this morning. Lord Jesus, there is none like you. You are wonderful. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are our creator. You are our father. You are our friend. You are our teacher. You are our redeemer, our restorer. Oh God, we look to you this morning and we magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we come before you. We ask for your cleansing this morning. From the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, O oh Lord. Make us worthy, Lord Jesus, to take our petitions before you this morning. And Father God, we know, Father, that Lord Jesus, once we come to you, O oh God, with clean hands and hearts, O oh God, that you will not turn us away, O oh Father. So Lord Jesus, as we come with our petitions O oh God we place this nation of Jamaica land we love before you O oh God Lord Jesus this is where we live this is where we go to work this is where we have our business this is where we raise our families and this is where we worship you so God we place this country before you this morning Lord Jesus there are so many things that are not going the way that you want them to go but Lord Jesus let us remember O oh God that you are still in charge Oh, Lord Jesus, and that you hold this nation in the palm of your hands, oh God. So, Father God, we place, Lord Jesus, this government before you, oh God, the leadership of this country before you, oh Father. We pray, oh God, that they will seek your face, oh God, knowing, oh God, that they can do nothing without you, oh God, we pray. Lord Jesus, the security forces, oh God, Lord Father, we place them before you this morning. We pray, O oh God, that, Lord Jesus, you'll cause them to be men and women of integrity in this land, O oh God. And, Lord Jesus, O oh Father, they will carry out their task as they would have done it unto you, O oh God, we pray. Father God, we look to you. We pray, O oh Father, for families. We pray for unity in families this morning. We pray, O oh God, that you will keep children in families, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, for parents, O oh God. That, Lord Jesus, O oh God, they will bring up their children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, O oh God. We pray, O oh Father, that they will go down on their knees and place their family members before you, O oh God. Lord Jesus, O oh Father, among family members this morning, there are those who are sick. There are those, O oh God, who are grieving at this time, O oh God. 
Lord Jesus, you know what it means to lose a loved one, oh God. It hurts the heart, oh God. And the pain takes such a long time to go away. So, Father God, we present the grieving hearts to you this morning. We pray that you comfort them, oh God, as only you know how, oh God. Place your loving arms around them, oh God, and draw them close to you. We pray for those who are sick, oh God. We pray that you touch sick bodies, O oh God, from the crown of heads to soles of feet this morning. We pray for those among us who are in person here, O oh God, who are not feeling well, O oh God, that, Lord Jesus, you'll send forth your touch, that balm in Gilead, O oh God, will come upon them this morning, and they will leave here, O oh God, different from how they came in this morning. We pray for those who are at home, O oh God. We pray you touch them. In a special way this morning, O oh God. Cause your special anointing, O oh God, to rest upon them, O oh Father, we pray. Remember those in the hospitals, O oh God. We pray for the caregivers in the hospital, O oh God. That, Lord Jesus, you will give, give them vision and wisdom, O oh God. As to how, O oh God, Lord Jesus, to help the sick, O oh God. Father, we pray this morning. O oh God, pour out, O oh God, this morning. Pour out, O oh God, we pray this morning. Father God, you saw the hands for the unspoken requests. You know the hearts of your people this morning. You know where they are hurt, O oh God. You know, God, that there are challenges, O oh God, that cannot be uttered, O oh God, through a word, O oh God, but only through groanings. And so you understand the hearts of your people this morning. I pray you minister unto each heart, O oh God, we pray. O oh, Father God, pour out, O oh God, a special anointing, O oh God, we pray. We come against any demonic forces, O oh God, that will want to enter this building this morning. We pray, O oh God, that your guardian angels, your angels will stand, O oh God, and fight for you this morning, O oh Father, we pray. Lord Jesus, we place the service before you. Everything that will come from now on, O oh God, is in your hands, O oh Father, we pray. And we ask, O oh God, that Lord Jesus, all of us who are gathered here, and those who are on their way, O oh God, that Lord Jesus, a change will be wrought in our lives this morning. We pray, Lord Jesus, that as the word comes forth later on, O oh God, that it will come forth with power and with clarity. And Lord Jesus will go forth and do what you want it to do. So, Father God, hear our prayer this morning. And Lord Jesus, if there's anything, anything at all, O oh Father, that Lord Jesus, we have forgotten, O oh Lord Jesus, to present before you this morning, fail not to grant it, we pray, in Jesus' name. And the saints say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. While we're waiting for those to come in and be seated, please turn in your Bibles to Luke 9, 1 to 10, and we'll invite our sister, Euphemia Ball, to come to do the reading. Luke 9, 1 to 10. Good morning, church. Our Bible lesson, morning's lesson, is taken from St. Luke 19. St. Luke 19, reading from verse 1 to 10.
I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And uh, I'll read and you follow. Thank you. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I, gave, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone, by false accusation I restore fourfold. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. Ten and last, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lo lost. Here ended the reading of his words. And we give thanks by saying, Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord. You may be seated. We now invite the praise and worship team to come. Right following the praise and worship, we'll have the welcome by our pastor, Reverend Duarte MacDonald. Praise and worship. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Can you stand for worship? Indeed, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. This morning, we are grateful to God. I am in a mode of gratitude because I woke up this morning. I didn't have any assistance to come to church this morning. I'm standing on my two feet, and sometimes we take it for granted to be alive. We leave out in the mornings and we say, see you later. It's not guaranteed that you'll come back later. But this morning, we have the privilege to see a new day. We say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and magnify the name of our King. Because His name is above every name this morning. Hallelujah. His name is greater than every name this morning. Hallelujah. At His name, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that He is the Lord of all creation. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, let us magnify the Lord, for indeed He is worthy Hallelujah. to be praised. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come, let's magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised.
Great. 
me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. A splendor, a splendor, a splendor, a Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. Sing with me 
how great, how great is our God. How great, how great, how great, how great is our God. Sing with me. on your good God this morning oh Jesus hallelujah oh God you are great and greatly to be praised this morning hallelujah oh thank you Jesus Yeah. 
air that we breathe. Hey, God. Mm. This is the air. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Somebody say praise be to God. 
Let me hear all the desperate people. You're desperate for the Lord. Somebody who's desperate for a miracle. Somebody's desperate for a move of Almighty God. Keep those hand clap going. Keep those hand clap going. When we clap our hands, we confuse the devil. Let's have a praise moment. Just rise to your feet all across this place and lift up the name of the Lord of God. Confuse the enemy. Your praise, your praise. Somebody's depending on your praise. Just praise the Lord. Lord God, we magnify you. Lord God, we lift you up. Lord God, we exalt you. We have come this morning desperate. We have come with our cups. Turn up. Fill our cups. Fill us this morning. One more time. Put your hands above your heads and strike them for the Lord. We serve the well able God. Praise and glory be to our God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You may be seated all across this place. Praise be to God. We are desperate. We were desperate for the Lord. Praise God and our desperation. We're not crying to a God that is searching for an answer. We're crying out to a God. He's the answer. He's the Alpha and He's the Omega. One more time, put your hands together and magnify the name of the Lord our God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Let me welcome one and all this morning, those who are in this space and those who have joined us on the World Wide Web, if you have joined us for the very first time here at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church, we say welcome to you. We're happy and delighted and excited to have you worshiping with us here this morning. We want to recognize those who are worshiping with us for the very first time. If this is your first time worshiping with us here at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church, could you just stand right across this place and be recognized? Please stand. Please put your hands together for those who are here worshiping with us and we are delighted to have you please remain standing until you are visited by one of our friendship persons friendship persons we have a number of persons standing here and this group worshiping with us this morning is the Kiwanis Club of South St. Andrew could we put our hands together for, for them one more time we are delighted and excited to have you worshiping with us and please you will be attended to by one of our friendship persons i see a number of persons still standing do we allow them to sit and you will find them later on please identify them ladies we're going to allow you to sit and uh, the friendship persons will find you a little bit and sister solomon is a part of that group we're happy to have you and uh, a little later on, we are going to hear from the president of the Kiwanis Club of South St. Andrew, Miss Andrea Roberts, and we'll hear from her in short order. We want to recognize and celebrate with those who are celebrating a birthday. All those who are celebrating a birthday today or recently, or you soon celebrate, please stand. I see Sister Donna, this all the Septemberites, please put your hands together for them. Better than that, all right. Give us a happy birthday song, Mr. Music. Give us a happy birthday song, please. birthday may God continue to bless and to keep all those sister Nicole and sister Donna do we have any person persons celebrating a wedding anniversary today recently you celebrated a wedding anniversary I see no hand hands celebrating wedding anniversary want to encourage us all right there is a couple there celebrating wedding anniversary please mr. music when
praise God. We have the new months celebrating their wedding anniversary. Put your hands together for the new months. All right. Brother and sister Newman, how many years of wedding bliss are you celebrating? 10, 20, 22, 23. All right, 23 years. Put your hands together for 23 years of wedding bliss. Praise be to God. We celebrate with you, and it's our prayer. Brother and Sister Newman, that the hand of God will continue to bless you, to bless your marriage and family. Is that an amen? Praise be to God. Put your hands together one more time as we celebrate with our friends. Praise be to God. And for those who have joined us for the first time, here we have service at the Greater Portmo Open Bible Church every Sunday morning, 7.30 a.m. And so you are welcome to come and to be with us and to worship the Lord. Praise be to God. At this time, we are going to invite the president of the Kiwanis Club of South St. Andrew, Ms. Andrea Roberts. We invite her to come and bring a greeting at this time. Please make her welcome as she comes to make this presentation. Good morning. Good morning, Reverend Hewitt McDonald, Sis Brenda McDonald, leaders of the church, members of the church, and well wishers. Thank you for allowing us to join you for worship this morning. We have a few members visiting. Your member, Sister Jennifer is our vice president designate of the club. <laughs> Just a little bit about who we are. We are part of a global organization, Kiwanis International, founded in 1915, an organization of volunteers dedicated to improving the world, one child, one community at a time. We achieve this through children, so our service to children, young adults, and the communities. Our motto is serving the children of the world. We are guided by six objects of Kohanis International and are governed by a set of constitutions, that those we call our bylaws. Kohanis offer clubs for adults and youths, youth, referred to as our service leadership program or Kiwanis family clubs. Service is at the heart of every Kiwanis club. Each club is an independent entity with its own traditions and priorities. Each community has different needs and Kiwanis empowers our members to pursue creative ways to serve the needs of children through our service projects and our fundraisers. The Kuan, a bit about more of the club itself, the Kuanis Club of South St. Andrew was organized on September 30th, 2015. We're all female club with a diverse membership. We are currently um, celebrating our seventh anniversary this month. We currently have 54 members. Our club theme for this year, service, inclusion, commitment, and compassion. We share one common goal, the dedication of time, resources, and talent to serve the children and the communities. We meet every second and fourth Wednesdays of each month. Our meeting, Meetings offer an atmosphere of fun, learning, and fellowship. Since 2015, we have been serving the youth and our community through various service and fundraising projects. Our service projects focus on the needs of children and address needs within the community, such as promoting 
and improving literacy, addressing food insecurity, supporting specific persons in need, being a, and other um, areas. I, I can't go into all of them this morning, time permits. These projects are worthwhile, rewarding, and impactful. All right. Just, uh, um, just two of our projects, I'm just going to mention them. We have a Sparkle project currently, which we sponsor a child or two with autism, learning disability in need with the hope of reducing positive, posit poverty constraints. This is made possible through the monthly donation of our members. As part of an initiative to narrow the digital learning gap created by the pandemic, we have, through our tablet project, Digital Inclusion, The Way Forward, we have been providing tablets to students, um, members of our service leadership program. In closing, I would like to thank you again for allowing us to share in your service this morning. I would also like to present a token to the Children Ministry at this time on behalf of the Kiwanis Club of South St. Andrew. This is a token from the Kiwanis Club of South St. Andrew um, to your children ministry, so I hope it, you know, it's, it will be placed and put to good use as we expect it to be. Thank you. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Another round of applause, please. Thank you. Fight in order. We know a special item from our sister, Vita Hector. Please come, sister Hector. Right following, we'll have our deaconess, Rose Wang, to come. To give us some pointers, uh, some senior... Seniors care is the theme. Good morning. <laughs> As I minister this song to you, may your hearts be blessed and God will be glorified.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a slight adjustment to our program this morning. Are you a vessel of honor this morning? Well, if you aren't a vessel of honor this morning, God has a word for you this morning. And at the end of this word, I sincerely pray and hope that you become a vessel of honor. We'll welcome at this time the message of our host pastor, Reverend Ewart MacDonald. Put your hands together for Jesus better than that. Praise be to God. He never threw us away. He gave us a second chance. Put your hands together for the God of a second chance. We give him praise. We give him honor. We give him glory. Had he not given us a second chance? Had he not given us a second chance, where would you and I be today? Praise him for a second chance. He's a God of a second chance. One more time, put your hands together and magnify the name of the Lord our God. The text was read earlier, and it comes to us from St. Luke chapter 19. And it is a very popular story. And uh, we read from 1 to 10. I won't read all of it for the sake of time. I have the King James Version of the Bible. I ask you to open your Bible with me. St. Luke chapter 19. And it says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who, was, who he was. And could not for the press because he was little in stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house this is a reading of a portion of god's holy word and we honor it by saying thanks be to almighty god shall we bow our heads and our hearts all across this place let us pray our father and our god we thank you for today we thank you for your love your mercy and your care oh god even as i stand behind this sacred desk only a lump of clay I pray, dearest Father, that self will be slain and Christ will be seen and heard, O God. We pray that souls will be won for your kingdom. We pray that hearts will be touched, changed, and challenged. Speak to me. Let me be only an echo of the voice of your Holy Spirit. O God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord God, our strength and my Redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. And the precious people of God say, Amen and Amen. This morning, to guide our text, the message this morning, I want to use, as I said, led of the Holy Spirit, to share this message. I sought the Lord, and I believe the Lord gave me a word for us this morning. Is that an Amen? Amen. And the conversion of Zacchaeus. That is the title of the message this morning, the conversion of Zacchaeus. Luke chapter 19, it records, it records one, the conversion of Zacchaeus, verse 1 through to 10. We also find in the same text the parable of a nobleman and, and his servants. And we find that coming from 11 through to 27. This passage is similar to the parable of the talents found in Matthew chapter 25. We also find, thirdly, it records the triumphant entry of Christ into Jerusalem. Christ enters Jerusalem. We also find, fourthly, we see Christ laments. He laments over the church. He laments over Jerusalem. If you remember, it was at that time that he drove out all the traders out of the 
temple at the time. And so it makes quite an interesting read, very, very informative. And so I encourage us to read the entire passage. And so as we look at the text, as we dive in the text this morning, hear what it says. It says Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. He entered and he passed through Jericho. And this tells us that Jesus was going somewhere. I'm going somewhere this morning. He was passing through to, Jer to Jericho. Where was he going? The question would arise. He was going to Jerusalem. He was going to the city of David. The place where he would be crucified, the place where he would die, his blood would be shed to wash away our sins. And so Jericho, interestingly, first appears in Old Testament history. And you can find it, its first appearance in Numbers 22. And it was when the Israelites camped on the Jordan River. You can find that. And as it continues, being mentioned further later we see Jericho mentioned again where Joshua chapter 2 and when he, Joshua took the city yes Joshua took the city of Jericho in a most unorthodox method of warfare in the history of any kind of warfare the walls of Jericho fell down when God instructed the people and Joshua led the people around the walls of Jericho. And what happened? The walls fell down. Is that you, Fabian? The walls fell down. And so, unorthodox. And God has a way of delivering his people sometimes in a most unorthodox way. Is that an amen? Amen. They never had guns. They never had bombs. But God instructed his people to walk around the walls of Jericho. And on the seventh time, shout. And what happened? The walls of Jericho fell down. But not only do we see Jericho there. Jericho, you know, so the walls had fallen down. But Herod later rebuilt and beautified the city of Jericho. It became a place of wealth and proof do i have proof of that yes zacchaeus the bible says was a very rich man he was a tax collector we're going to dig into that some more how did he become rich he became rich by overtaxing the people wealth was in jericho for him to overtax the people yes and so we see jesus passed to to jericho on numerous occasions in fact, he was baptized in the Jordan River. He healed blind Bartimaeus. Where did he heal blind Bartimaeus? Jericho. He healed blind Bartimaeus, Jericho. Where can you find that? Read Mark chapter 10. Yes? The parable of the Good Samaritan. Where do we find its setting? Where is the background? Where did all of that take place? It took place on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. The conversion of Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector, where did it take place? It took place on the road of Jericho. And so, three things about Jericho at a cursory glance when you look at Bible history. Jericho, one, was a place of warfare. Jericho was a place of wealth. But Jericho was a place for witnessing. Is that an amen? Yes, yes. Warfare, an orthodox way where the Joshua went up against the, the, the enemies of Israel, came up against them, they had the advantage. They didn't know how they would enter the city. The, the city was perched above them, them Joshua and, and his army. They took the city in a descent. They were at a disadvantage. But in a most unorthodox way, they won. The walls of Jericho came down. And so it is a place, I call it, of warfare. But it's also a place of wealth. But it is also a place for witnessing and a place of witnessing. And so as we talk about evangelism, think about it. I don't know where you are on your Jericho road. 
Maybe it is a place of warfare. Maybe you're fighting for victory. You're hoping and looking to God. I want to encourage someone this morning that God has a way of doing things not how we expect or how we plan it. Remember, they had no guns, but they, had, they were obedient to the voice of Almighty God. Can you imagine the people in the village or the people in the community when they saw Joshua and uh, the people of Israel walking around the wall, walking, just walking, they would think that something was wrong with their upstairs, Sister Solomon. Any, but it was God's way of giving his people victory. God can give you victory in the way he chooses. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. He is an orthodox, but he will bring us into victory. It was a place of wealth. And it was also, Jericho was known for huge palm trees banana trees were there as well and those palm trees it just decorated the city beautiful city and you know palm trees they say palm trees represent strength that's what they say about palm trees and so as we run on the parable of we, we see this man getting saved at this place Zacchaeus the bible says a chief tax collector this position of a chief tax collector is only mentioned here in scripture it is mentioned nowhere else and this title he was he was in charge of districts or he was in charge of modern day parish or parishes he had other tax collectors that reported to him yes and uh, the, in in uh, the Jews, yes, Jewish tax collectors like Zacchaeus were scorned. They would have uh, nothing to do with him. They were scorned by their countrymen. They were seen as thieves. They were seen as traitors who worked for, collaborated with the Roman government and cheated the Jewish people. So a man like Zacchaeus people wanted nothing to do with him or little to do with him yet somebody say yet somebody say yet though he was coined though he was seen as a thief as a traitor uh, one who collaborated with the Roman government and cheated the people yet Jesus Christ on his way to Jerusalem for something very important as the climax of his calling to the world to salvation they, he was on his way to jerusalem as the messiah as the prophesied messiah to die for our sins the one that would be raised from the dead the one today who is seated at the right hand of god making intercession for you and i pleading our case and cause Yes, he was on a, a very important assignment. Yet, he stopped to show love to someone seemingly insignificant. That sounds like a praise the Lord. Somebody said praise the Lord. Somebody said that sounds like me. Yes, Jesus was on his way. Remember, we told you who Zacchaeus was. You heard his resume. Seemingly insignificant. A man called Z Zacchaeus. Jesus Christ stopped to, 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 to show love to him. And you know, when I read this, I said, thank God he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sin. Thank God that Jesus Christ has stopped by us today. He's here with us. He has come today and he's stopped by us. He's listening to us. He's hearing us. Scripture says that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that which we will ask or able to think. And he has stopped by us today. Put your hands together and magnify the name name of the Lord our God we are not too little or less for him to stop by to hear us and to help us and so 
and, and, and remember, interestingly, Zacchaeus was about four feet ten inches. He was considered to be a dwarf. Yes, he was not this great king or this uh, great stature, this huge guy. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was four feet ten inches. And it's, 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 it's important, it's significant. Why is it significant that, we, that I've mentioned his height? Zacchaeus, being so short, little in stature, he climbed into a sycamore tree. You know, high they said a sycamore tree would grow 30 to 50 feet. It's way up top. Yeah? I don't know how such a little man would get into such a big tree. I don't know. Maybe he used a ladder. In the, those days they never had, you know, those bucket trucks that JPS would use to carry all the way up to the light pole. They never had any of those. But I believe it was seeing Jesus, seeking after Jesus. It was important. Zacchaeus saw it so important. He might have used a ladder. He might have asked somebody to help him. But Zacchaeus said, this day I hear Jesus Christ is passing my way. And I will not let him pass him. Don't let him pass you by today. Cry out to him. Call to him. If we call unto him, he will hear an answer and show us great and mighty things that we know now. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Jesus Christ is passing our way. And you know some people, I won't call any names, but all they do is wave to you. On a certain time of the year, when it gets to a certain time, they will come to you and knock on your gate and ask, how you're doing? Always the children, always the cat. Yes? <laughs> but after a certain event, we don't see them again and don't ask they're not asking you about any more cat and if you do see them you might get the tooth of a horn because they are busy they don't have any time to stop by you to stop by us but jesus christ has stopped by and see you and i as people with faults and failing and sometimes we disappoint God. Is that an amen? Say amen, no man. I don't say, Pastor, you alone. No. I believe sometimes we all disappoint God. Is that an amen? Amen. But Jesus Christ stopped by. He climbed into this tree. I believe he, he, he wanted more than just to see God, Sister Raquel. I believe he was seeking after God. Remember, he would have had all the things and the trimmings and the trappings of this life. He was a very rich man. Yes, very rich man. So he would have had all the luxuries. But he, he would have heard about Jesus and he wanted to see him. And I believe he was seeking after God. There are three things I want to leave with us before I take my seat. One, I want us to look on the, con the, the, the crowd. I want us to look on, as we, as we look on the conversion of Zacchaeus, I want us, one, to look at the crowd. I want us, two, to look at the condemned man. And thirdly, I want us to look at the, the compassionate Christ. The compassionate Christ. And so, let's look at the crowd. The crowd certainly, from what we have described earlier on about tax collectors, the crowd despised people like Zacchaeus. They want to have nothing to do with him. History says they scorned him. They labeled him a traitor. One who defrauded men. And so the Jewish people would have despised people like Zacchaeus. Not only would they have despised him but they distanced themselves from a man like Zacchaeus and interestingly not only did they distance themselves from him they wanted Jesus Christ to distance himself from Zacchaeus and you know as we look back in our lives brother Wayne Thompson we have to say praise be to God that Jesus did not distance himself from us. That when we go to Jesus, him don't say, who is that? 
usher him out who is that one there usher her out but he says come unto me all ye that are labored and are ever laden and i will give you rest somebody put your hands together and magnify the name of the lord our god so the crowd <laughs> despised him they wanted jesus to distance themselves from him you ask me pastor where's the proof that they wanted jesus to distance himself from look at the text when you look further in the text jesus christ said zacchaeus come down i must go to your house and look at the response of the crowd the bible says they started to murmur sister solomon they were, they were saying if it was jamaicans us yes you jesus is going to eat with zacchaeus how could you how could you even consider same to go to that man's house an insignificant man a man that is seen as a robber traitor you would consider to go and eat with him you should have nothing to do with him but every time we read scripture every time we look at the man in the mirror we have to say thank you jesus thank you that you remembered me thank you for a second chance thank you for an opportunity thank you for the privilege of salvation to serve jesus christ it is a privilege it's an opportunity because how do you look at our faults and feelings and background and some of the things that we can't put on tv about ourselves he would say no you see you forget it <laughs> you, you you are not qualified if it was for riches and only education and certain things yes you would make it if it was only for those who had a phd you must have a phd is a good thing if it was certain categories of people only you and i would not qualify but today we are qualified courtesy of the shed blood and broken body of jesus christ that is a praise moment that is a hallelujah moment that is a thank you jesus moment praise be to god and so the crowd despised him the crowd distanced themselves from him and they were saying how come don't he know who he is going to don't he know what that man does have he never heard about his resume have you ever seen his resume so they murmured saying was gone to be the guest with a sinner but you know the response to that in the text he says i'm not come to call the righteous but i have come to call who sinners to repentance and i, I want to make this point a crowd many times act or sometimes act according to his culture and you can look at a crowd and look at the behavior of the crowd and i'm positing this you can think about it and it can tell us how the crowd was orientated or cultured why let me prove it to you in bible times as this a part of the jewish culture what is articulated is that when you go and sit and eat with somebody or if you invite somebody to your house by the way it means that that person is your friend you consider that person a friend you consider that person of good report you consider that person of good repute <laughs> no zacchaeus was certainly the opposite of that and so the crowd would have rightly well the crowd would have reacted because of how they were cultured yes and so the crowd you know the crowd the, the crowd is not always right my friends let me tell you the crowd did not all is not always right so the crowd might have despised him the crowd distanced themselves from him but in spite of Zacchaeus's resume Jesus was deliberate he was despised the crowd distanced itself from him but jesus christ heading to this very important assignment was deliberate to pass through jericho because jesus christ wanted to meet zacchaeus praise god 
We might not be tax collectors like Zacchaeus, but when we think about Zacchaeus, we have some kind of Zacchaeus thing about us that God needs to remove or change. Is that an amen? Say amen, no man. Amen. And you know, we thank God. The only people saw about Zacchaeus, he saw him as a problem to be removed, eliminated. But you know what? Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. They saw Zacchaeus only as a problem to be eliminated. But Jesus Christ saw his potential. Jesus Christ has seen what you can become. He sees our future and he's able to change us and make our future bright. If you believe that God is able to change you, to change our situation. Somebody somewhere, put your hands together and magnify the name of the Lord our God. That not only see our problems, but he see our potential he sees our potential and so so we move on from the crowd to the condemned man there's a condemned man chief among tax collectors he was rich and how he became rich he became rich by overtaxing the people and so the tax collectors that reported below him he, and he, 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 he commanded them to overtax the people. And then when they overtax the people, he overtaxed them. Hmm? Sound like some of the things that we know about. Extortion. You ever hear that word in Jamaica? He was doing something similar. Like that. So the condemned man. Three things about him. One, he was short in stature. The man was short and started four feet ten they said somewhere there but this short man ran ahead as we said of the crowd ran ahead of the crowd and climbed into a sycamore tree 30 to 50 feet in height can i say to us my friends sometimes you have to move away from some things is that an amen sometimes when you go to work in the lunchroom and they're talking some things you have to ask excuse is that an amen some conversations we can participate in them as a christian so praise the lord the man yes some places that people encourage you to go you have to say no i can't go with that kind of crowd i can't be in that kind of a place you have to move move away move ahead yes and so he was short in stature but Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Not only do I say that Zacchaeus was short in stature, but this man, like all of us, was short of the glory of God. Yes, sin has brought unto man separation from God. And so we are short outside of God and Christ. Despite our intellectual capacity, despite our wealth, despite our connections, despite riches, despite the type of car we drive, where we live outside of God and Christ, man is a sinner that needs to be redeemed and to be restored by God and Christ. Short in stature. But the man was short also of God's glory. A sinful man. But the other thing about Zacchaeus. He wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus. Yes. And as a rich man I don't think he was short of seeing some people. But there was something special about Jesus. All the, with all the riches that he had. He also had a void that he, I believe he was said to himself, it is only Jesus Christ that could fill and can fill. He had a desire to see Jesus who could set him free from sin. And so we've looked on Zacchaeus. Yes, the conversion of Zacchaeus. We have seen this condemned man. We saw that we see the reaction of the crowd. Finally, we want to see the compassionate Christ. Look at the reaction of the compassionate Christ. Yes, crowd. You know, be careful of the crowd, my friends. They say 90, 80 to 90% of the things that are popular. Brother Wayne, 
it, they are not right. They are popular, but they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not the right things. And so we go to the compassionate Christ. Verse, chapter 19, verse 5, hear what it says. It says, when Jesus Christ came to the spot, one, the one version says, when Jesus Christ came to the place, Jesus came, he looked up, my God, he, he, he remember who, who Zacchaeus was, you know, he could have just been on his merry way, but he looked up, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste. Come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Talk about compassion. Imagine what the crowd, well, Scripture doesn't tell us. But history tells us that that is a man that you must not talk to. He must be scorned. And Jesus Christ stopped at the spot where he was and said, Zacchaeus, come down. Not only is he saying, come down, but he says, I must abide at your house today jesus christ is calling somebody today and he says i must abide not only at your house today but in your heart today so jesus christ stops at the spot interestingly he addresses zacchaeus by name we must miss that he says zacchaeus with all that what zacchaeus represented with all the negative he called him by name because he was about to give Zacchaeus another name. He was inviting Zacchaeus to another life. And I want to say this. I don't want us to miss this. Remember, it wasn't Zacchaeus that invited Jesus Christ to his house. But Jesus Christ invited himself to Zacchaeus' house. Why so? That Zacchaeus would in turn invite Jesus Christ into his house. Is that an amen? Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord. He invited himself to Zacchaeus' house. Opening the way. Paving a way. Opening the door. Because, and, and, and right to so. Look, look, look at Jesus, the son of God. The son of David. The savior of the world. And Zacchaeus with his kind of dealings. He would have considered it very difficult, Sister Solomon, to say, Jesus, you want to come to my house? You mean thief in Zacchaeus' house? You, you cannot come to your house. You are wrong door. Yes, I suppose Zacchaeus thought that about himself. And he said, but I am not worthy to have Zacchaeus come to my house. So, you know, Jesus Christ is a bridge builder. He break down the barriers. And so Zacchaeus might have been thinking those things. But Jesus Christ built a bridge. Yes, he broke down the barriers. He says, Zacchaeus, today I will come to your house. You don't have to invite me, but I'm inviting myself. I am making the opportunity. I am presenting an opportunity. I am making it for you, Zacchaeus, easier. He invited himself to Zacchaeus' house so that Zacchaeus would have the opportunity to invite Jesus Christ into his heart. So Jesus was overwhelmed with the palatial setting of Zacchaeus' house. He had more, a greater intention than that. And though the crowd was murmuring, though the crowd was upset that Jesus, the Son of God, has gone to Zacchaeus' house to, meet, to eat fish and bread, Jesus Christ changed the menu because they didn't know that Jesus Christ is a bread of life. When Jesus Christ comes to our house, the menu changes. And one once the Messiah enters our premises, enters our space, not only the menu changes, but the man changes. The heart of man must change when we come into the very presence of Almighty God. Somebody somewhere, put your hands together and magnify the name of the Lord our God. And we have to say thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Because some people that know us, and know 
they, they're not coming to us. They, they said, no, we, we don't want to talk to you. You, know. you is a problem. So we want to have little or nothing to do with you. But Jesus, despite our problems, he sees our potential. And he invited himself to Zacchaeus' house. But we go from the house. Remember, we say we're not going to belong. We go from the house. And we see, we, we see the, fact, the fact that he said Zacchaeus come down. And Zacchaeus came down in obedience. It tells us that Zacchaeus had a hunger, you know. Zacchaeus had a hunger. That is wealth. The luxury of the life that he was living, it could not fill the void and the gap that was in Zacchaeus' heart. So we see, we see the house, we, we, we recognize that he had a hunger, but he was humble. He came down. He could have said, but Jesus, I, I, I'm not coming down. But he came down, he took up the invitation, and we see that Jesus Christ was really after his heart. Son of man, in the text, it is his messianic title, the one who brings salvation by his death, burial, and resurrection. By his stripes, we're healed. Zacchaeus' heart was changed. He was now a convert. I mean, the Bible wouldn't tell you every single thing, but after meeting Jesus, Jesus went to his house. I know, I believe they would have had a conversation. And Zacchaeus would have given his heart to Jesus Christ. His heart was changed. And this man that had a changed heart was changed from being a sinful man to a happy man. Is that an amen? Is that an amen? Amen. And there is proof as I come near to a close. There is proof, my friends, of Zacchaeus' conversion in the text. He said, Pastor, where is the proof in the text? Thanks for asking. Watch this. Look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man for his accusation, I restore him fourfold. So as I come near to a close, Paul says, finally, my brethren, many times, this is the final, final proof of Zacchaeus' conversion. Not only is there in, this, in the text proof of his conversion, because remember, the title of the sermon is The Conversion of Zacchaeus. But brother Wayne, there's public proof of his conversion. Imagine Zacchaeus in the community now. Remember, he's a tax collector that overcharged people, extort the people. Imagine Zacchaeus turning up at somebody's gate and say, Hear me, I have come to distribute today, not to overtax you today, but I have come today to give back to you half of the things that I have robbed you of. Yes, you know you shouldn't pay in a tax. See it here. Now they would, they would, it would be by electronic. They would send back the money electronically to them. And for those who we overtaxed, they got back fourfold. He says, see it here. And so you would have gone around in the community. Yes, there's no FedEx and Western Union, Sister Solomon. So you would have publicly gone around to say here here is the money what does that tell us it tells us about a man that was now converted because at first when Zacchaeus come a fret you have to go fret hide under your bed because you're going to pay what you must pay plus more than what you must pay but this new Zacchaeus this changed man this redeemed man this restored man this man that has repented has sought the Lord and is now a change man with a new heart a happy man has returned publicly to say here I give back to the poor and so my brothers and sisters friends this is a case of the converted Zacchaeus the conversion of Zacchaeus 
The crowd had a very strong opinion. The crowd had a strong opinion. The crowd not, didn't even want Jesus Christ to talk with him. This man was a condemned man. But we see the compassionate Christ on an important assignment. But he stopped to show love to a seemingly insignificant person called Zacchaeus. He invited himself to Zacchaeus' home. His heart was changed. His life was changed. And we see the evidence of public proof, the public proof of Zacchaeus' conversion. Zacchaeus' life was changed by an encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. And so I raise a question, my friends. Do you want Jesus Christ to change your heart and life? Whatever, was, whatever is in the past, whatever is in the present, whatever, however you feel about yourself, he can still change us. The question, do you want Jesus Christ to change your heart and life? I'm going to invite us to bow our heads and our hearts all across this place. Those in the virtual space, pause. We don't know if Jesus Christ might come before 10 o'clock. And we'll have to give an account of our lives. You can't say you didn't know. We've heard the message. Jesus loves you. Jesus Christ died for you. And he wants to forgive all of us of our sins. If you never heard all of the message. And that is it. Good to see you, Brother Wade, Pastor Wade. <laughs> My friend and brother. Praise be to God. But as we bow our heads and our hearts... I want us all, whether you are in the physical space or in the virtual space, I want us all to say a prayer to Jesus. Say something to Jesus. You know, ask him to bless you, ask him to forgive you, or pray for somebody. Say something to Jesus, my friends. We come to church like this publicly and openly. We don't know if that will always be the case. And maybe Jesus Christ will come before we go back home. What would be our excuse? Can't be that we never heard the gospel message. Can't be. And as we have bowed our heads, our hearts, and have spoken to Jesus, talked to Jesus, is there one that we say, Pastor, or to Jesus, that I am not a Christian, but I want Jesus Christ to change my life. I don't want him to pass this moment, this day, because we don't know about tomorrow. Jesus was not coming back to Jericho. He was going to Jerusalem where he's going to be crucified. Never won't come back that way like that. He's passing your way. He's at your seat. He's knocking on the door of your heart. He said, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not a Christian and I would like Jesus Christ to change my life. Is there one that will say, I want Jesus to change my life? Just raise a hand and take it down and we'll pray with you and pray for you. Is there one person gathered in this audience, in this space this morning to say, I am not a Christian. I want him to change my life. Raise a hand and take it down and we'll pray with you and pray for you. Is there one that will say, Please pray for me. I want Jesus Christ to change my life. Do I see a hand? Come. Just as you. Is it the hand of the little girl? All right, I see a hand of that child at the back. Is there another? I see a hand of this little girl at the back. Is there an adult? We see the children, rightly so. The Bible says, a child shall lead them. Is there one that will say, please pray for me? I'm not yet saved. We're not here by chance this morning, but it's the Spirit of the Lord that led us. I see your hand. Take it down, man, that little one. Is there one more that would say, please pray for me. I am not yet saved, and I want to give Jesus Christ a chance in my life. Is there another? I believe that there are some persons online as well. We're going to ask you to do one more thing. The children, or even if you didn't raise your hand, all those who Jesus Christ called in the New Testament, he called them publicly. If you want to receive Jesus Christ in your heart and life, if you want him to change the course of your life's direction, 
Here's a grand opportunity, my friend. Today, now is the day of salvation. I don't know about tomorrow. Maybe the next major move you heard, the last major thing that, uh, that rippled the, the, the airwaves, breaking news across everywhere, all across the planet. 7.3 billion people on the planet. I believe you would have heard that Queen Elizabeth is no longer alive. She has made her transition. It might not be the transition like that, but it might be the sound of the trumpet of Almighty God. What will be your excuse? Those children, those little ones that raise their hands to receive Jesus Christ, come forward. We want to pray with you and pray for you. The children, I saw two little ones that raise a hand, come forward. If you're here as an adult, here's your grand opportunity. Will you come? Just come forward and let's pray with you and pray for you. All right, we're not, they're not coming forward. But I'm going to ask you, my friends, to bow your heads and your hearts. You might be seated here and for whatever reason you never came forward. Let me tell you something. We must never go about in innocence. We must go about with knowledge and information. And let me say something to us. If we don't bow today, my friends, the angels in heaven one day, they will help us to bow. Accepting on that day, too late shall be our cry. Every knee shall bow, the Bible says. Every eye shall behold him and every tongue will confess. Make your seat your altar. I invite you to do so, my friends, whether you are online or in person. Pray this prayer after me if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I recognize that I am a sinner. Today, I repent of all my sins. Today, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Praise be to God. Put your hands together for somebody that pray that prayer. You are coming with her. Come along. Come along. Come along with her. A child shall lead them. And she wants to give her heart to Jesus. Put your hands together for her. Parents, let me teach you something. We know that the, some members of the Kiwanis Club have to leave. We want to thank you. Thank you. Put your hands together for them. We want to thank you, Miss Roberts and the team. We understand that uh, some of the team members have to go to another assignment. And so may the hand of God bless you. Let's pray for the team before you leave. Team, just stand and let's offer a word of prayer for you. We hear that some of you have to leave. And you, you know where to find us when you're looking for a church again. Stretch your hands towards this, this group of, from the Kiwanis Clubs. Oh God, we thank you for these women, servants. We pray that you will bless them, even as they journey from, journey from here to another location. We pray that you'll cover them. Cover them under your blood. Keep them as they continue to do good works. Oh God, keep them and cover them. And we commit them to you for every blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Put your hands together for them. God bless you. We love you. And thanks for coming. Praise be to God. They are on their way to another location. T turn around. Here is a little child that has come. What is your name? Pretty. Ashley. You've come to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Ashley, you want Jesus Christ to change your life? All right. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. You're going to say this prayer after me, Ashley. And Jesus Christ will change your heart and life forever. All right? Praise God. Let's pray. Our Father, say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I recognize that I am a sinner. Today I repent of all my sins. Today I receive, repent of all my sins. Today I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. She has some questions. <laughs> Put your hands together for her. Go with the counsel. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Go with the counsel. And children and parents, when the children, if they're this young, and they tell you that mother, father, 
I want to get baptized. I want to serve Jesus Christ. Oh, praise God. Take, take, take her along. We have a way of telling them that they're too young, Brother Wade. They, they, they're my baby. You can't let them go to church and get baptized and give their heart to Jesus, Brother Wade. But some of the things that they are doing and are capable of doing at the primary school, the basic school level, you'll be shocked. So when we see them like that, we encourage them. And those online who give their hearts to Jesus Christ today, find a Bible-believing church. Let the pastor and the leaders know that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ today. We want to thank you for joining us today. And may the hand of God continue to bless and continue to keep you. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord. Please, we have, uh, we have some things to do. And if you don't, if you don't have to leave, don't leave. I have a friend and colleague of mine, um, uh, Brother Wade. Brother, Brother Wade is an assistant pastor at another church, but he's here this morning on an assignment to tell us about some offerings of Harchus NTA, not only for you, but members of the community. There'll be a major drive in and around Portmore here to certify people, to have people trained, and uh, who best or where better what other people should carry that message of training and opportunity along with the gospel of jesus christ so that we can change and improve lives we have some just some other things to do so we ask you just to remain with us and i know you are saying pastor what about the offering what what but please i know you are giving people and you love jesus we have not forgotten. We're going to invite the moderators to come back. We, well, I don't see them. So maybe we're just going to go right ahead and collect the morning's tithes and offering. Please just hold your tithes and your offering in your hand at this time. Just hold your offering tithes in your hand at this time. And we're going to pray a prayer of blessing over your life and over your family at this time. The ushers are ready to collect same shall we bow our heads and our hearts as we pray let us pray our father and our god we thank you for this opportunity that you have provided for us that we can sow a seed in the fertile soil of kingdom building lord god even as we release this offering we pray that you'll bless it bless the givers lord i pray that your favor will pursue and overtake your people bless us in every area of our lives oh god as we give to you today we thank you for hearing and answering prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And the precious people of God say, Amen and Amen. Ushers, Mr. Music, praise to you.
praise the Lord. I know the morning is far spent and we still have a few things to do. So I'm going to go quickly through just some pointers for how we can assist seniors to take care of themselves. And as was mentioned earlier, senior citizens, anybody from 60 years and older, and that is what goes here in Jamaica. So we're going to look at a few areas. We're going to look at their diet. And senior citizens need to have food from all the food groups. So they need their protein, they need their vegetables, their fruits, their starches, and they need to drink water. And we encourage not to have very spicy foods. And foods need to be colorful. So our carrots, which are yellow, or pumpkin foods for them, especially if you have to prepare food for older adults, they don't want it to look too drab. So it must be colorful and tasty. So it must have a little spice, but probably you need to cut down on the peppers and all of that because sometimes their appetites change as they grow older and so they might not have to you know tolerate all of this we also have to remember that some have lifestyle diseases like our high blood pressure or diabetes high cholesterol and so on and they need to follow their dietary advice as prescribed by their doctor Let us look at exercise. It doesn't mean that because someone has attained the age of 60 and has retired, that it's the end of the world. They need to go for walks. They need to do their little gardening, whether it's of flowers or plants, you know, vegetables, tomato, callaloo. It doesn't have to be a large patch. Probably in a little pot just to keep themselves occupied. And rest and sleep is also important. They also need to communicate with family and friends. Don't cut off communication because, oh, I'm not going to work anymore. And so here I am all alone. Keep in touch. Recreational activities. We need to read, do crossword puzzles because it helps the brain to keep sharp and focused. And... Uh, Take medication as ordered by your doctor. Even if you are not feeling well, visit your doctor at least every three months for a checkup. And if there are blood investigations or x-rays or whatever is ordered for you, you need to have them done. Seniors also need to volunteer. And some persons have skills. They do baking. They cook very well, and they can use this hobby as uh, something as for generating funds in their later years. And so in Jamaica, we have what we call the National Council for Senior Citizens. And it's an agency that is run by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. And it networks with private sector, public sector, and it helps to promote nation building because senior citizens, it's at the end of the world, they can still participate in nation building. And as we talk about income generating with the skills that they have. And that is it in a nutshell. At this time, I'm going to invite representatives from the choir to do a selection. They are not here? No. Okay, at this time, we will have two special presentations to two members. I'll invite our pastor. 
Reverend Yoart MacDonald to join me at the lectern. Yes, Reverend, you may come, sir. All right, good morning, one and all. Good morning again. We want to recognize two of our senior citizens. Did I see Brother Roden here this morning? Oh, yes. Put your hands together for Brother Roden. I don't know if there is um, a senior citizen in the house this morning that is older than Brother Amos Roden. No? Brother Amos Roden is on 91, thereabout. Put your hands together for Brother Roden. We are going to invite our sister Joan Smith to come. Sister Smith, could you just come forward? Put your hands together for Sister Smith, one of our very faithful senior citizens, Usher. Part of the WW, and we want to recognize her service this morning as we celebrate our senior citizens. Please put your hands together for her, for them. Sister Smith. Sister Smith, on behalf of the congregation here at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church, we wish to recognize your service your faithfulness as an usher and all the other things that you are involved in and as a senior citizen we celebrate this milestone and may the hand of God continue to bless you and to keep you Sister Smith. God bless you All right, I'll now invite our brother Philip Erskine to come. Our brother Philip Erskine is a very loyal member of this church. He's a member of the praise and worship, a member of the choir, He's a building contractor. You could basically say he built this church. And so partially built this church. So it is with this in mind, your faithfulness to God, that we present this token to you on behalf of the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church. Thank you very much, um, this church and everybody who participate uh, make this make this thing um, for me. I would say thank you all for your um, cooperation. Thank you very much. All right, all right, brethren, we have the we'll take the announcement and we have uh, Mr. Cecil Wade here from Harches NTA. He has a, a brief announcement for us very important for us as church and community and so right following Ella Gordon with the announcement we are going to invite one of the recruitment officers from Harchus NTA Mr. Cecil Wade to come and share with us briefly so at this time we'll take Ella Gordon and then Mr. Cecil Wade will come praise God good morning everyone good morning all right that's better Okay, each Sunday morning we share with the congregation excerpts from our member's manual. That's the member's manual that is used in all the Open Bible Churches, Open Bible Standard Churches of Jamaica. And this morning we'll be looking at daily Christian life. We believe that having been cleansed by the blood and quickened by the Spirit, it is God's will that we should be sanctified daily becoming partakers of his holiness, walking not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
forsaking the very appearance of evil, such as worldly amusements, worldly conversation, worldly habits, etc. All right, the announcements for the week are as follows. Please join us for Sunday School for All Ages, discipleship class for persons who desire to be baptized, and membership class for those who desire to be a member of this church. And these classes every Sunday morning immediately after service, all right? And the classes for those who um, are desirous of being baptized, your class is held right up front here. And those who want to become members, your class is to my left at the corner there, all right? Every, okay, we invite one and all to join us for Bible study this Tuesday, September 20 at 8 p.m. And it's going to be via the Zoom platform and the link ID 391-546-2597, passcode 408673. And the link will be shared in the various church WhatsApp groups. Every Thursday at 11 a.m., we meet right here for Mountain Movers Prayer Meeting. And we invite you to come on down. If you can't come, please put your request in the box. Youth meetings are held every Friday via Zoom at 7.30 and in person on the fifth Fridays of each month. So, please remember to donate to the love box or the love barrel. And that's a blue box at the back there, and that barrel that is wrapped in red. Please donate um, items. We ask that you just take something from your cupboard, um, from your grocery basket when you go shopping. If you buy a pack of six or something, just take out one. Sometimes I know we forget. But when you go shopping, just before you, uh, you put away your things in the car, just take out one item and say, this is a tin of something, a pack of something, and say, this is for church. All right? And we will get it to the right person. There are persons in the congregation who may be in need, and also persons from the community that come by and may need something. So what you give will go a long way. All right? Please remember. And we thank you for your continued financial support, your gifts of your tithes, your offering, and we ask that you continue to remit same. You can do it by, via the ABMs, you can do it online, and the banking information, National Commercial Bank, that's NCB, University Branch, 401-094-431, and we ask that you email the particular study office, just tell us what you have sent, who it's from, and what it is for. And you can send that to greaterportmoreob at gmail.com. You can also call the church's office. And the numbers are 502-5059-622-3444. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Fridays, 8.30 to 4.30. All right? And if you're here and you know somebody who wants to give something and they can't get to us, just call the office and we will make arrangements to pick up same. Please remember to continue to pray for the bereaved families. Also pray for our nation, our leaders, sick and hurting persons. And we are so happy to see Brother Amos here, Sister Blair is here, and Sister Palmer is here. Continue to pray for those who are not well. And our condolences to our brother Deacon Jonathan Steer and family. Brother Steer lost a sister during the course of uh, last week. Please remember. And if you have a debt in your family, if you are sick and you want us to share with the congregation, please let the office know. The Lord bless you. Have a great week and a great day. Thank you very much, Pastor McDonald. Good morning, church. So I am Cecil Wade, recruitment officer, Art NSTA Trust with the Portmore Parish Office. So I have been given five minutes, and I will adhere to that instruction. So you can time me. 
All right, so first of all, let me just give uh, Pastor McDonald referred to us as the Heart NTA. Uh, I like to give us the correct name for the organization. We are the Heart NSTA Trust. Now, we are celebrating 40 years. The, the, heart, the heart was established in 1982. So this year is our 40th anniversary. And we are having a number of events across the island in celebration of 40 years. Now, you are aware of Heart NTA, National Training Agency. You have also been aware, I think, of the National Youth Service, the NYS. The, those, let me see all those who remember Jamal. Okay, so Jamal changed into Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, JFLL. Now it is under a new name, which is the High School Diploma Equivalency. And I'll tell you more about that. And we, we used to have the apprenticeship board. Now, Heart NTA, National Youth Service, Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning, and the apprenticeship board, we have all, they have all merged, and we are the Heart NSTA Trust. The Human Employment and Resource Training, National Service and Training Agency. Now, our mission is to facilitate and ensure the development of our human capital. And what is our vision at the heart of STHS? A globally competitive workforce impacting nation building through human capital development. So I will say this to you, heart of a program for everybody. And because I'm somebody who has grown up in the church, um, I always say that I would like the church people them to know what are the opportunities available in heart. And our opportunities are available to persons. Remember this, if you forget whatever I say, don't forget this. From 17 to 100 teen. Let me repeat, from 17 to 100 teen. So if you fall within that age range, then listen out clearly for, to what I'm about to say. Number one, we offer skills training in almost every area you can think of. If you want to go into cooking, um, agriculture, fix car, work on house, work on computer, do here and all these things, etc., etc., you can come to us. And our institutions, those who are fully funded by the trust, we have removed all administrative fees effective September 1, 2022. Now, what does that mean? Listen now, um, our fees are little and done at all. I'm talking about you are getting access to an institution for 9 to 12 months doing a course and you'd have to pay like say $5,000, $3,000 alone. You're getting first rate um, training, skills training. Those have not been removed. So if you have anybody in your family who needs to be trained in a skill, we are, whatever it is, we have removed administrative fees. There are some institutions, however, called CTIs, community training interventions that we don't fully fund them so they may charge you 10,000 or so on just like that we offer certification if you are a skilled worker you are highly skilled but you have never been trained formally we offer one day certification so if you're a skilled mason um a skilled barber a, st a skilled chef you, are, you raise livestock, you plant crops. We offer one day certification, which is free of cost. In addition to that, I mentioned Jamal, JFLL. We are registering through our high school diploma equivalency persons for free CSEC classes. Now, if you, if, remember I said 17 to 110? If you are 17 and still in high school, you can't come to us because we don't really go where the Ministry of Education is treating with the people. But we are up for free CSEC classes and we're registering right now. Now we offer also on-the-job training where we place you in places to work. We pay you a stipend. And we also put into a course at the same time, a level two, bizarre records management accounts, etc. etc. So as I said before, heart of a program for everybody. Now, on the 11th of October, 
we are coming into Greater Portmore to have a massive one day assessment and certification. We are looking to certify people in customer service, retail merchandising, crop production, livestock rearing, and all areas in the construction field. Also, those who are called janitors, we call them public area hygiene attendant. We want to certify them as well. So in respect of the time allotted to me, I'll just say to you, member 17 to 100 teen, if I never said it, I'm here lingering so you can come and ask me, but heart of a program for everybody. Thank you very much. Amen. We are at the end of our service this morning. Please stand as we do the closing hymn. We'll do trust and obey. We'll do the first verse and last verse. Hallelujah. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. Hallelujah. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory he shed on our way while we'll do his good will while we'll do his he'll abide with us still he'll abide with and with all who will trust and obey and with all who will trust and obey come and lift your voice trust and obey trust and obey there is no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey then in fellowship sweet then in fellowship we will sit at his feet we will sit at his or we'll walk by his side or we we'll walk by his side in the way while we'll do his good will while we do his will where he said we will never fear Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise be to God. A little extended today, but we were able to get in all. We have some refreshments for our senior citizens and uh, allow them first. And if there, is, if there are others, then, um, then you can participate. I want to see the men just for about three minutes on the platform before we close. So all the men, could I see you for about three minutes? Very important. Shall we bow our heads and our hearts? Remember Bible study. This Tuesday, we are going to raise a question. What did Jesus Christ say about his own return? Did Jesus speak about his own return? That is where we want to go. Shall we bow our heads and our hearts? Our Father and our God, we thank you for your love, your mercy, and your care. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Though we were condemned, Oh God, you out of your compassion, you've saved us from sin and today we celebrate. We're no longer enemies, but we are friends of God. We bless you and we honor you. We thank you for all that was said and done. And I pray your blood covering over your people as we go from this place. Go with us and be with us in a very special way. Cause us to have a productive week and a week with your favor pursuing and overtake us. We commit everything to you for your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. We say amen and amen. Raise your right hand all across this place. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forever. Amen and amen. That mass training and... Uh, 
certification, we want to have it here where it, so you'll get some more information. You can see Mr. Wade right after church. God bless you.